They laughed at Earth, until they realized their necks were in the jaws of the humans that lived there. The Borvian professor Linner slams his clawed fist on the podium. The young Borvian students jump in their seats. Kraltar listens, intrigued. Professor Liner clicks through pictures of a blue planet called Earth. Our first scout ship landed on this primitive dirt ball. The native species, humans, could barely escape their atmosphere. The galactic community dismissed Earth as just another useless backwater. Kraltar stares at the strange bipedal humans with their small teeth and soft flesh. They look pathetic compared to the powerful and advanced insectoid Borvian, but the humans' eyes burn with a strange intensity, a relentless drive. Kraltar wonders if the galaxy is underestimating these are humans. He decides to research Earth further before the rapidly advancing humans do something that changes the galaxy forever. Kraltar dug deeper into the galactic archives, searching for any additional information on the humans. He stumbled upon a classified report from the Galactic Council's delegation to Earth. The file was heavily encrypted, but Kraltar's curiosity drove him to bypass the security measures. As he read through the report, Kraltar discovered that the Council had sent a group of their most influential diplomats to assess the humans' potential. The delegation was led by Zorkax, a notorious Zelnar, known for his arrogance and short temper. The report detailed the delegation's meeting with Earth's leaders. Zorkax, in his typical pompous manner, demanded that the humans submit to the Council's rule. He boasted about the Council's military might and technological superiority, expecting the humans to cower in fear. But to the delegation's surprise, the humans remained defiant. They refused to surrender their sovereignty, stating that they would not be bullied into submission by an alien power. The human ambassador, a man named John Andrews, stood firm in the face of Zorkax's threats. Krelta could almost hear the Zelnar's rage as he read Zorkax's response. You dare defy the Galactic Council. We have the power to reduce your pathetic planet to ashes. But Ambassador Andrews didn't flinch. He looked Zorkak straight in the eye and smiled. You're welcome to try. The report ended abruptly, leaving Kraltar with more questions than answers. What happened after that meeting? Did the Council make good on their threat? And if so, how did the humans respond? Kraltar leaned back in his chair, his mind racing with possibilities. He knew that he needed to find out more about these humans and their apparent fearlessness in the face of galactic powers. The young Borvian had a feeling that this was just the beginning of a much larger story, one that could change the course of the galaxy forever. Kraltar's mandibles clicked with anticipation as he scoured the galactic news networks for any information about the Council's response to Earth's defiance. He didn't have to wait long. Just a few cycles after his discovery of the classified report, a breaking news alert flashed across his display. Galactic Council launches invasion fleet to conquer Earth, the headline blared. Kraltar's compound eyes widened as he read the details of the massive armada assembling near the human homeworld. The fleet was a sight to behold, consisting of thousands of ships from the Council's most powerful member species. Sleek Zelnar destroyers, heavily armoured Borvian battlecruisers and nimble Kretar fighters all converged on Earth, ready to teach the upstart humans a lesson in galactic politics. Kralta watched the live feed from the fleet's command ship, where Zorkak stood on the bridge, his chest puffed out with pride. Today, we will show these primitive apes the true power of the Galactic Council, the Zelnar boasted to his subordinates. They will learn the price of defiance. As the fleet approached Earth, the mood on the bridge was one of smug confidence, the Council's military might was unmatched, and the humans were seen as little more than a minor nuisance to be swatted aside. But as the ships drew closer to the Blue Planet, the sensors began to pick up strange readings. Kraltar leaned forward, his antennae twitching with curiosity as he watched the data stream across the screen. Sir, we're detecting a massive energy signature surrounding the planet, one of the bridge officers reported to Zorkax. It appears to be some kind of defensive perimeter. Zorkak scoffed. Impossible. 
These primitives couldn't possibly have the technology to... His words were cut off as a blinding flash of light erupted from the planet's surface. The Council ship's shields flared as they were hit by a barrage of advanced weapons fire, the likes of which they had never seen before. Krelter watched in amazement as the human defences tore through the Council fleet like a hot knife through butter. Ships exploded left and right, their hulls breached by the relentless onslaught of human firepower. Impossible, Zorkak sputtered, his eyes wide with disbelief. How could they have developed such advanced weaponry without us knowing? As if in answer, a transmission from Earth cut through the chaos. The face of Ambassador Andrews appeared on the screen, a satisfied smirk on his face. You underestimated us, Zorkax, the human said calmly. We've been preparing for this moment for decades. Did you really think we would just roll over and surrender to your threats? Zorkax's face contorted with rage, but before he could respond, another volley of human weapons fire slammed into his ship. Alarms blared as the bridge shook violently, consoles exploding in showers of sparks. Sir, we've lost over half the fleet, one of the officers shouted. We need to retreat. Zorkax slammed his fist on the console, his pride warring with his sense of self-preservation. But as more and more ships fell to the human defences, he realised that he had no choice. All ships fall back, he ordered through gritted teeth. We'll regroup and plan our next move. As the battered remains of the Council fleet limped away from Earth, Kraltar sat back in his chair. His mind reeling from what he had just witnessed, the humans had not only stood up to the Galactic Council, but had soundly defeated them in battle. He knew that this was just the beginning. The Council would not take this humiliation lightly, and the humans had just painted a giant target on their backs. But Kraltar couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration for the brave and cunning Terrans. They had defied the odds, and proven themselves to be a force to be reckoned with, and as he watched the Council ships disappear into the void of space, Kraltar knew that the galaxy would never be the same again. The news of Earth's stunning victory over the Galactic Council's invasion fleet spread through the galaxy like wildfire. Species that had once dismissed the humans as primitive upstarts now spoke of them with a mix of awe and apprehension. The Council, humiliated by their defeat, retreated into a brooding silence, leaving the rest of the galaxy to wonder what would happen next. Kraltar, now a young adult, found himself part of a Borvian diplomatic mission to Earth. The Borvian, ever pragmatic, saw an opportunity to establish peaceful relations with the newly ascendant humans. Kraltar, with his long-standing fascination with Earth, was eager to see the planet firsthand and learn more about its enigmatic inhabitants. As the Borvian ship approached Earth, Kraltar stared out the viewport, his compound eyes widening at the sight before him. The Earth that he had seen in the old archives was gone, replaced by a world that was a marvel of advanced technology and infrastructure. Gleaming cities sprawled across the planet's surface, connected by a network of high-speed transport tubes. Massive orbital stations hung in the sky, bristling with the same advanced weapons that had so easily defeated the Council fleet. And in the space around Earth, a bustling network of ships and satellites buzzed with activity, a testament to the humans' newfound status as a galactic power. As the Borvian delegation disembarked, they were greeted by a human honor guard, their crisp uniforms and polished weapons a far cry from the primitive creatures that the galaxy had once dismissed. Kralta couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement as he stepped onto the surface of Earth for the first time. The delegation was escorted to a sprawling government complex, where they were greeted by none other than John Andrews himself. The former ambassador, now the president of the United Earth Government, had a knowing smile on his face as he shook hands with the Borvian ambassador. Welcome to Earth, Andrews said, his voice warm but firm. I trust that your journey was pleasant. The Borvian ambassador, a grizzled veteran of galactic politics, nodded curtly. It was, thank you. I must say your planet has undergone quite the transformation since our last encounter. Andrews chuckled. Indeed it has, but then again we humans have always been full of surprises. As the two leaders exchanged pleasantries, 
Kraltar found himself studying Andrews closely. The human leader had an air of quiet confidence about him, a sense that he knew something that the rest of the galaxy did not. Later, as the delegation was being given a tour of one of Earth's gleaming new cities, Kraltar found himself walking alongside Andrews. The human leader seemed to sense his curiosity and turned to him with a raised eyebrow. You have questions, don't you? Andrews asked. Kraltar nodded. I do. How did, you, how did your species manage to conceal your true capabilities for so long, and why? Andrews smiled. Ah, oh, that's a long story. But suffice it to say, we humans have been preparing for first contact with alien species for centuries. We knew that we needed to be ready, to have the technology and the resources to defend ourselves if necessary. But why conceal it? Kraltar asked. Because we knew that if we revealed our true strength too soon, we would become a target, Andrews explained. The galaxy is a dangerous place, full of species that would love nothing more than to conquer or enslave us. So we bided our time, building our strength in secret, until we were ready to take our place on the galactic stage. Kraltar nodded slowly, his mind racing with the implications of Andrew's words. He realized that he had been right all along. The humans were far more than they appeared, and their rise to power was only just beginning. As the tour continued, Kraltar couldn't help but marvel at the incredible achievements of the human species. From their advanced technology to their unbreakable spirit, it was clear that they were a force to be reckoned with. And as he looked out over the gleaming spires of Earth's cities, Kraltar knew that the galaxy would never be the same again. The humans had arrived, and they were here to stay. As Kraltar's time on Earth stretched on, he found himself drawn into the human world like a moth to a flame. He walked among them, studied them, and slowly began to understand the secrets of their success. It started with their bodies. The humans were not the strongest, fastest, or toughest creatures in the galaxy, but they were adaptable, able to thrive in a wide range of environments. They could endure extreme temperatures, survive on minimal resources, and recover from injuries that would cripple other species. But it was their minds that truly set them apart. Humans were relentless problem solvers, always seeking new challenges to overcome. They took risks that other species would consider insane, driven by an insatiable curiosity about the universe around them. Kraltar saw this firsthand when he visited one of Earth's premier research institutions. He watched as human scientists tackled problems that had stumped the greatest minds in the galaxy, using unorthodox methods and unconventional thinking to find solutions that no one else had considered. How do you do it? Kraltar asked one of the researchers, a brilliant young woman named Dr. Sarah Novak. How do you come up with these incredible ideas? Dr. Novak smiled. We're not afraid to fail, she said simply. We understand that progress often comes from taking risks and learning from our mistakes. It's part of who we are as a species. Kraltar also saw the human capacity for cooperation in action. He attended a summit of Earth's leaders, where representatives from every nation and culture came together to discuss the challenges facing their planet. Despite their vastly different backgrounds and ideologies, the humans were able to find common ground. They debated and argued, but always with a sense of shared purpose. When a crisis arose, such as a natural disaster or a threat from beyond Earth's borders, they put aside their differences and worked together seamlessly. I've never seen anything like it, Kraltar remarked to President Andrews after the summit. Your species has such diversity, and yet you're able to unite when it matters most. Andrews nodded. It's not always easy, he admitted. We have our share of conflicts and disagreements, but at the end of the day, we recognize that we're all in this together. Our survival depends on our ability to work as one. As his time on Earth drew to a close, Kraltar found himself filled with a newfound respect for the human species. He had seen their strengths and their weaknesses, their triumphs and their struggles, and he had come to believe that they were destined for greatness. "'Are you humans are going to change the galaxy?' he told President Andrews on his last day on Earth. "'I can feel it in my exoskeleton. Your species has a role to play in shaping the future, and I can't wait to see what you'll achieve.'
Andrew smiled. Thank you, Kraltar, he said. That means a lot coming from you. I hope that our species can work together to build a better tomorrow for all of us. As Kraltar boarded the ship that would take him back to Borvian, he took one last look at the blue planet that had captured his imagination so long ago. He knew that he would never forget his time among the humans, and he knew that the galaxy would never be the same. For better or for worse, the humans had arrived on the galactic stage, and Kraltar had a feeling that their story was only just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.